Now, Cyberpunk 2077 has been out for a fair while at this point. And what I'll say is I got the game when it first came out. I thought it was a fantastic game. I thought, in general, that it was great. But it was mulled down with a lot of problems, glitches, bugs, and just performance issues in general. I personally didn't experience them, so I can't really talk from a perspective of the game was crap on launch. I didn't feel that way. I really didn't. But I can understand that a lot of people did have problems and a lot of people did feel that way. But what I would say to those people that didn't give the game a chance back then because there was problems is that you should maybe give it a chance now. In terms of the way the game looks, Cyberpunk 2077 is stunning. You have the massive towering skyscrapers, the affluence of the corporate lifestyle and the future tech of the game. And then you have the balance of the lower rung of society, the mercs, the impoverished, the dumps of Night City, where you could literally look for miles and there's nothing but rubbish. It is very much a polarising game, where you can see that the top are so wealthy, so powerful, so, well, privileged, and then the people on the bottom have nothing. And you start off, depending on what way you go, as the privileged, and then you end up falling to the bottom. That's if you choose the corporal lifestyle. And I, I just feel like in terms of how it works and how it frames the game, it's just very, very visually impressive. And it's CD Projekt Red's first real foray into that kind of thing. I feel like they've done a fantastic job, and they've obviously drew um, inspiration from things like Blade Runner and other cyberpunk futuresque things. And I just feel like they've done a stunning, amazing job when it comes to how the world looks and how the world is. And I'm looking forward to how they evolve that for the future iterations of this game. So we briefly went into bugs and problems with the game and in the beginning yes the game did have a lot of issues. There was problems with performance, um, textures, quests bugging out, um, characters just looking weird. There was so many different things and what I would say to everybody is that for the most part these things have been patched out and fixed. There is always going to be issues with any game involving performance at this, this day and age. We're in an age where people release games that are so broken and so buggy that they can't run, period. And there's still games that were like that and are still like that. Things like Anthem, for example. So I, I feel like if you think Cyberpunk is a buggy, buggy game, then you weren't wrong, but you're probably wrong now. If you have one of the more performance-heavy PCs or consoles, the game should, in theory, work fine for you. So I would recommend picking it up for that sake. Then we move on to things like gameplay. Now, in terms of the gameplay, Cyberpunk never lacked. It honestly never lacked. The movement system in the game is absolutely great. You have this kind of ability to just jump and fly off edges, you know, all the cyberware that gives you this maneuverability in the game just feels really, really good. And I just love it, you know, being able to double jump, all that kind of thing. And the combat system is very intuitive and very visceral. I feel like when I use melee in the game, for example, there's nothing funner. I love just clobbering someone with a knife or using mantis blades to rip them apart or mono wires or punching them to, to death. In terms of the guns, I feel the same way. The guns um, feel responsive and they do, they do exactly what you want them to do. And each gun, within reason and within obviously type, is kind of unique in certain ways. You know, the way they handle, the recoil on them, the um, amount of damage they do, the the kind of spread on the shots if you've got things like shotguns and, and all that and all of these kind of things are what makes a game fun you want differences in weapons you want differences in each kind of thing you use a different feel to them and it has that it has this very very intuitive combat and movement system in the game that just feels great 
and there's so many different builds and different ways that you can play the game. I mean, for example, my most recent playthrough was a melee kind of throwing knife build, where most of the time I'd use a sand devastan to slow down time and throw knives into people's faces or snap their necks. But if I ever had to get into a fight, I could just use my knife to slice them apart or the mantis blades to really slice them apart. And this is the kind of thing, that this isn't how I played the game originally. I mean, I played the game as a netrunner where, for the most part, I avoided directly engaging enemies. I would blind them. I would um, make them distracted. I would cause their cyberware to malfunction and then I'd snap their necks or I'd shoot them with a handgun. It just depended on the situation because sometimes you're forced to fight. And this is the thing, you can play this game in a multitude of different ways. You can go in all guns blazing. Or you can pretend that you're not even there and sneak up on them. You can literally not fight at all. There's very few instances in the game where you're actually forced to fight enemies. For the most part, you can just avoid any and all combat just by simply sneaking around and being smart. And this is the thing about a game when it comes to gameplay. If you give the players the ability to do what they want, then they should enjoy it. Because it's what they want to do. And I feel Cyberpunk really hit that on the head. It gave you that freedom of the choice that a lot of games don't give these days. And at the same time, the game is linear. But it's linear in the direct way that you have to go a very specific path. But the way you get there and the choices you make along the way are pretty much your own. Now, since we glossed on the choice and things like that, the story-wise, now I think the, the, the game's story is actually pretty decent. And the way it works and the way it is, I very much feel like it is done like a tabletop RPG. And what I mean by that is this game is based on a tabletop RPG. This game is basically based on something that's akin to... Um, D and D, uh, Scion, um, Exalt, Exalt, Exalted, and um, there's loads of tabletop games out there. If you don't know them, I would heavily recommend you look into them. And the way you have to look at a tabletop game is that everything is kind of done by the DM, the person in charge, the one who's created the story, and the the person who then lays it out before you. And they have a story progression in mind. They have a story that they have set out in their head of you will go do this, you'll go here, you'll do the X, Y, and Z. And in tabletop games, quite often the party will deviate and meander and wander around. But the main story is always there. And it's always the 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 position of the DM or the person who's managing the game to try and lead his players back to where he needed to be. And this is the thing that I feel Cyberpunk does really well. Because you in the end are forced to go a very specific path, do very specific missions, but there's a ton of load of side missions and tons of other kind of little things you can do. You don't feel pressured into going back to the story, but you will have to get there eventually. But it doesn't feel like the same way that it does in Skyrim or Fallout, where you have to go fight Alduin, you have to find your dad, you have to find Sean, and then you just leave it until you know, the cows go home. You have that option of going back and it just doesn't feel like you're being forced to do it or like the game's pushing you to do it. There's so much to do, so many places to go, so many things to see. And I'm not going to say this is a story that's in the same level as, you know, Shakespeare, to give you a terrible example. I'm, I'm not a fan of Shakespeare, but you know what I mean? It's a thing that people put up on a pedestal. It's not that level of storytelling, but it is fun, and I do enjoy the story. I do enjoy the world. I do enjoy the characters, and there's so many characters in the game that I've got genuinely invested in, and I, I care to see them do well, Victor. <laughs> like, best best man ever, Victor. Um, so that that's something that's great about this franchise. They've made characters that you want to like. And that's a core thing of any RPG. Liking the characters, liking the world. Now, I'm going to go into probably the thing I like the least about Cyberpunk 2077. 
the driving system. Now, this again is their first foray into this kind of thing. So I'm not like going to be absolutely brutal about it. But when it comes to the driving, I think they have done poorly in comparison to other games. And the reason for that being is that I mainly drive motorbikes and they are the only thing I feel in the game that was done right in terms of driving. The motorbikes feel like they've got weight to them. It feels like they're responsive. It feels like they don't turn too sharply for absolutely no reason. They feel like a solid object moving at speed that moves as it should. But when it comes to the cars in the game, I feel like I'm driving a marshmallow in a freaking hurricane. They are so floaty and so light and not weighty at all. They spin out at the, the most ridiculous inputs. Like, literally, you could just turn a wee touch and straight off the road um, into a family of four. There's so many things about the cars in the game that just doesn't feel right. And for something that has four wheels, I would have thought that it'd be a lot more manoeuvrable than the bikes. I could be wrong, I'm not a driver in real life, but I've played a lot of games that have driving in them. And the cars just feel a bit wrong. And don't get me wrong, some of the cars are better than others. Like, the car you get originally in the game isn't one of these cars that just feels like it's all over the place. But the second you get to some of the cooler looking cars in the game, you have this big weird floaty feather and, and, a, and a freaking snow globe spinning around. It's just, yeah, the driving needs work. And I hope that's something that they focus on in the next game. On top of that, obviously, we see flying cars in the game and we never get a chance to operate one outside of mods that people have made. And I'm hoping that they do bring that in as well, that they, they create some sort of flying mechanics because it would make manoeuvring Night City not only easier, but a lot more majestic, especially if they really made you work for that flying car. You know, maybe only had one in the game, but they really made you work your ass for it. Because I think that would be interesting in itself. Now, Obviously, with the release of Edge Runners, Cyberpunk 2077 has got a lot more attention from a massive host of different audiences all across the world. Anime has that power to bring different people from different regions all together. And I think people are finally seeing that Cyberpunk 2077 is not a bad game. And in my opinion, it never was. I think it was always a masterpiece. It's just the bugs and the problems with the launch had created a system where people just judged it poorly because shitting on a game that is having trouble is the cool thing to do. But we're starting to see that people are acknowledging CD Projekt Red's work. They're acknowledging that they've done the work to fix this game and get it on track and get it where it needs to be. So much so that there's an expansion coming out in the near future. Phantom Liberty, and we're going to get to explore a new region of Night City and take part in new quests. Now, if this DLC is anything like any of the other DLCs that CD Projekt Red has released, and specifically one that I can think of, Blood and Wine, we are in for potentially a whole other game worth of content. CD Projekt Red is a company that doesn't do things by half measures, and I'm hoping that Phantom Liberty is substantial content, and I think it will. I trust CD Projekt Red, because they've never let me down. They released a game that wasn't working properly, but they fixed it. They fixed it. They did fix it. How many companies can you say that release broken games and then actually fix them? They usually just leave them a broken buggy mess. And it's why I am looking forward with bated breath for the sequel as well. So overall, my review of this game, what do I think? Well, I think we've got a stunning world, fantastic combat system, an absolutely stellar cast of characters with an okay story. It's not like, as I said, it's not Shakespeare. We have a, a driving system that could use work. And overall, it's just a great game. Then you've got tie-in animes. You've, you're going to have... A, potentially a movie I believe as well there's so many different things that are going for this game and I think that you'd be a fool not to give it a chance if you haven't already and that's that I mean cyberpunk is not going to be everybody's cup of tea 
But if it is your cup of tea, if you like the world, you like what I'm saying, give it a chance and tell me what you think yourself. I hope you won't be disappointed.